I can't believe it's brains again. I guess I know who's responsible for dinner tonight. Well, what's wrong with brains, Sven? I don't know. I mean, like, brains yesterday, the day before that, ever since we started on this project. Brains, brains, brains. I didn't even want to eat brains in the first place, let alone this many times. Even the dog is tired of brains. Well, we can eat the dog. No, you can't eat the dog. You gotta pet the dog. I'm not trusting you anymore with the responsibility of finding food for our party. It's over. Well, you knew I was a rogue. You can never trust me. Speaking of trust, this brings us seamlessly <laughs> to the theme of our community update today. Today, we're going to be talking about romance and relationships in Baldur's Gate 3 and building up trust in your party. And joining me to explain you how we do things in BG3 are Sarah Bayliss, our lead writer, and Jason Latino, our cinematic director. We did a big interview with them, so I suggest we have a look at what they have to say. For example, you have someone like Gail who needs to consume magical artifacts in order to survive. He's got this... I don't think I'm supposed to say that. Never mind, that's a spoiler. <laughs> Okay. Uh, when you meet the characters in this game, they're not just sitting there waiting for the player character to happen upon them, really. They have their own motivations, their own reason to be there, um, their own history. And when the player meets them, they have an opportunity to form a party that has a shared goal. One with all, Flacket blesses me this day. Uh, so the group that we're traveling with, um, under normal circumstances, would never ever have anything in common, have any reason to travel together. Um, you have a Githyanki warrior, you have a folk hero of the Blade of Frontiers, you have a cleric of Shar, you have a wizard that wants nothing more than to be in his tower studying wizardly things. Um, but they're kind of forced into this situation where their best chance of survival is going to be to rely on each other. But that doesn't change the fact that under normal circumstances they've got next to nothing in common and the question is going to be, is this shared goal going to be enough to keep them together or are their differences going to tear them apart? A sharp tongue, elf. Would that your mind proved its equal. Half elf. So because your party is made up of these extremely different people who would normally never be associated or have a group together, there's going to be plenty of conflict, particularly um, at your camp when they have a moment to reflect on what's been happening, what decisions you've made that might have favored one of your fellow travelers over another, that's all going to kind of come to a head at some point. And it can even happen that one character might not survive a particular conflict depending on how you decide to settle it. <laughs> The relationships that you have with your companions are not solely defined by the specific things you say to them in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, if I'm traveling with Shadowheart, she's always going to be observing the decisions that I'm making, who I choose to fight, who I choose to spare. So everyone in your party is always going to be watching you, um, seeing how you interact and uh, forming their own judgments about you based on that. Your camp is the place that, as you're going through your adventure, you can always kind of get your bearings, talk to the people you've been traveling with, um, have a moment to reflect on everything that's been happening. And in these kind of quiet moments are where the conflict comes to the top. You have a moment of silence and safety and it's gonna bubble up there. Um, not only conflict as well, you might have a relationship developing with someone that you're traveling with. And in this kind of quiet moment around the campfire is when you're gonna have a chance to explore that and get to know them a bit better, or maybe they'll come to you and say they've been noticing you or really impressed by something you've done, and the camp is the kind of moment where that's gonna come to a head as well. I want you to know that I like what I see. In short, I've grown to trust you. Um, so we put a lot of time and effort into making our companions and origin characters as kind of nuanced as possible, but at the end of the day, this remains a D&D game, and the most important character in a game of D&D is you, the player, who you want to be, um, what kind of character you want to create. And um, we tried really hard to make sure that a customized character is not missing out on anything in the game world. They still have layers to discover about themselves and mysteries to unfold. A drow in the sun. Stand down! This one's got a touch of the absolute about her. So with Dungeons and Dragons, we're all telling a story together. Uh, uh, part of telling a three-dimensional story is, is romance. So what we have to look at is we have to look at uh, the, the scenes that the writers are giving us, uh, the, the, the rules of the game, 
um, the, all the different uh, races and classes and stories that the players can tell um, and the romance options and make that all feel real to them and make that feel authentic to the player. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Um, uh, here we have like Shadowheart and the player getting to know each other uh, over a bottle of wine uh, while they watch the stars come out over the skies of Faerun. Um, this is something that is, it's not written explicitly into the script, but it's something that uh, the, the writers allow us to adapt into, into cutscenes uh, and uh, figure out how we can arrange the characters so they're closer to each other. When are they looking at each other? When are they looking away from each other? When are they staring into their bottle of wine um, wondering what to say next? When are they fumbling for words? Uh, uh, you know, this is, this is something that comes up with you when you have a dialogue UI. And it's, it's, it's analogous to getting to know somebody for the first time and choosing your next words wisely. Uh, because in a game like this, uh, the, what you say dictates what these relationships can turn into, how far can they go, how much do you learn about these characters, and uh, just generally what shape a relationship is going to take. I must admit, you've been a surprise, and not an unpleasant one. There are other more intimate moments that we film here as well. Uh, uh, we use storyboards to onboard the actors, onboard uh, the art team, in order to figure out uh, uh, what's going to happen, uh, what needs to be captured live in the camera, what needs to be present in the data, um, as well as letting the actors know how we're going to use that data, how we're going to present their performance to the audience. So when you're working with the, the, the player's guide from Dungeons & Dragons, you have uh, all of these different races at all these different sizes, uh, uh, action scenes, romance scenes, they all have to work for whatever the player chose to uh, chose as their race. We have to consistently honor their choices. We have to say, it's just like, no, you're a halfling hero. Uh, uh, there's, no, there's no problem that's too big for you. Um, no, no, don't do that, don't do that. No matter who you are, no matter uh, uh, what story you're telling, uh, romance can be a big part of your journey, and we're here to make that feel real. And there you have it. Now, just like the characters that Jason and Sarah are trying to bring to life are looking for a way of getting rid of the tadpole that's going to turn them into mind flayers, we at Laring Studios are working very hard trying to get that early access version in your hands. Whether the party is going to succeed of getting rid of sermorphosis and everything that that entails, we don't know. What we do know is that we are about ready and it should be in your hands very, very, very soon. And with that said, this is probably one of the last community updates before the early access release. So thank you very much for watching. See you very, very soon. We can't wait to hear what you think of Baldur's Gate 3 and I look very much forward to hearing all of your feedback. Take care, everybody. Until next time. Bye-bye.